大家好，欢迎大家参与 Loop 珠宝研学院嘅珠宝知识一零一线上分享会宝石篇。而今次嘅分享会咧，其实分四日嘅，包括有黄金、玉石、钻石同埋宝石。而 Loop 珠宝研学院咧，其实系由周大福珠宝集团支持，目的咧就系培养珠宝业嘅优秀人才。今日咧，我哋好开心咁样请到国际珠宝商品企划专业行政人员协会。I A J M P P 联合始创人邵云竹博士分享对于宝石行业嘅资讯啦，同埋一啲宝石嘅应用嘅，有请邵博士。多谢大家，我谂啊，今日系一个好好嘅机会啦，同大家喺呢度有一个知识或者我哋叫做啊经验体会嘅交诶、呃、交流，亦都系圣诞节之前咧，大家我希望我哋今次嘅呢个分享会咧，系俾大家一种圣诞嘅礼物，作为知识上嘅一个增长。埋，大家可以多啲，以後咧，誒、呃，響 Loop 呢個學習平台上面咧，更多體驗同埋認識更多朋友。咁今日我諗，我嘅題目咧，就準備同，誒、哎，我要開一個，我坐先嚇。要分享咗個 PowerPoint 先。我諗大家睇睇個題目啦。第一樣就係、是、今日嘅啊分享會咧，我哋有三位誒、啊、speaker。咁其中咧，我係第一位，我會同大家分享嘅就係美學或者我哋彩寶喺我哋設計上邊。我哋點樣運用佢？而第二位咧就係啊，寶石協會主席阿廖順儀博士會講下寶石嘅顏色科學。第三位喺美國嘅寶石啊設計師阿 Justin 同我哋分享實體嘅寶石設計工藝同埋一啲心得。咁喺我嘅短短十五至十八分鐘咧，我同大家分享嘅就係講下我哋對於彩寶，我哋點樣用一個心態去理解，運用於設計。同埋佢喺設計嘅過程之中，帶俾我哋嘅價值，同埋我哋點樣運用得適切嘅。當然啦，我知道過去幾個研啊分享會咧，都有好多行家或者有啲年青嘅朋友。咁我喺呢度最尾咧，我希望做啲嘅知識上嘅分享，希望抽磚引玉。咁喺啊，我用簡單嘅介紹下我自己咧。其實我入行嘅時間已經四十年㗎啦。咁我都係意外地，或者一個好好嘅機會咧，我去翻咗理工大學設計學院咧，有一個啊博士學位。咁我集中研究珠寶設計。咁喺今日嚟計，點解我會講下寶石咧？因為我亦都有一個英國寶石協會嘅寶石學問題。呢個係我簡單嘅一啲背景。咁我早誒、呃、十多日之前咧，我收到誒、嗯、Loop 嘅一個我哋叫做信息咧，就話要為今次嘅講座做一啲。我哋嘅誒做個 PowerPoint 咧，咁我喺呢度咧，我想帶俾大家一個簡單嘅睇法。第一樣，其實嚟計，我哋每日都生存喺一個有顏色嘅世界。我哋無論我哋實體同埋我哋嘅情緒上咧，都對顏色係有好直接嘅關係。咁我有時講笑，我發夢啊，寫 PowerPoint， 其實咧，我哋發夢咧，有時都會有顏色嘅。所以今日嚟計咧，我哋喺嗰個啊～、呃運用彩色寶石裏面咧，我哋要明白究竟佢喺珠寶上邊，佢可以帶俾我哋嗰個攜帶者，或者我哋去選購珠寶嗰時，我哋應該有啲咩影響因素？咁我喺咁長嘅時間之中，工作經驗之中，其實顏色係決定咗我哋嗰件首飾究竟會賣得好啲啊，定賣得更好啲？就係、是、純粹個 design 上面用顏色上嘅差異，咁呢個係乜嘢咧？就係、是、我今日點提嗰個情緒上嗰個影響。咁喺我哋業界之中咧，我哋知道其實每年咧，我哋都有潮流報告書。其實我哋留意一下，潮流報告書喺珠寶設計之上咧，更加會講彩寶喺顏色上嘅一個潮流
。我哋除咗個紅潮咁大之外咧，我哋亦都知道有好多我哋嘅品牌係以顏色作為佢嘅設計嘅 DNA， 即係話喺佢嘅品牌哲學、佢嘅論述或者佢嘅推廣上咧，顏色係佔有好重要。咁我都可以話，我哋見到，譬如 Enso 呢個品牌，其實佢叫做彩寶大師添。咁咁廣泛嘅話題之中咧，我想引用我一個啊十十差唔多十年前咧，我哋請到一位非常之出色嘅年輕設計師 Anna。Anna 駕臨香港嗰次嘅高峰會議上面咧，佢有幾席話，其中我刻意選擇 Anna 嘅説話嚟同大家分享下，因為。佢係一個顏色嘅魔術師，喺寶石、彩寶運用之上咧有獨到之處，而更加重要咧，大家見到我嘅 slide 上邊咧，佢有一份作品係我特別中意嘅，個 idea 係嚟自一個國畫，但係大家留意個點梅嗰、那個嗰啲梅花嘅點，同佢嗰只珠寶嘅手飾上面嘅耳環嘅梅花嗰個 transform 過去同埋隻眼。轻重点，全部咧用颜色都作出一个好好嘅配置。咁我哋明白，颜色宝石如果响用得好嘅话，喺个设计里边带出美丽，带出一个品质，一个高嘅工艺嘅感觉。另外，仲带俾人就系、是、嗰个设计师嘅品牌里边嘅原真性。呢、这个系非常重要，并非话一般我哋将佢做到七彩咁简单。咁我後面仲會再引述阿 Anna 一啲重要嘅講話。咁我刻意揀咗 Anna 一件 signature design 呢一件頸鏈咧，我哋當年佢帶嚟俾我哋嘅業內嘅好多好多年之好久嘅朋友都拎上手都愛不釋手。顏色嘅配置係卓越嘅，但係大家見下佢個大啲嘢係嚟自莫奈一篇印象嘅名作。而阿 Anna 有一句名句我好中意，佢話每一個顏色就一個音符。顏色寶石一個一個 color stone 就係音符，佢係做一個做一個作曲家。咁我哋見到呢位出色嘅設計師，能夠將顏色運用去到啊神級嘅裏邊咧，我哋知道背後係有嗰啲章法嘅。當然啦，其實嚟計究竟我哋都要講下顏色引起我哋嘅情感，其實情感就非常之豐富，喜怒哀樂就平常講咧，但係深入啲去睇下。咁近啲十幾年咧，我就非常之有興趣用學學嘅觀點去講人嘅情緒。咁呢度大家睇下，原來唔止喜怒哀樂咁簡單，其實有好多係正面嘅情緒，其實都有好仔細微觀嘅情況。負面嘅情緒原來亦都有好多種。嗱，人就係咁噶啦。咁我哋對住珠寶設計或者我哋叫做彩色寶石嘅運用，其實我哋要對任何嘅情緒，我哋都可以有一種。表達方法原因好簡單，個客人入嚟唔係代表一定要喜氣洋洋嘅，個心情單啲咁多，咁買啲乜嘢令佢嘅令佢情緒會正面啲咧？咁呢個我哋真係幫佢解下鎖嘅嘢。咁當中嚟計咧，我諗最重要嘅就話，我哋知道用彩寶喺同一個設計之上，原來都有達至唔同嘅視覺感覺同埋感受。咁呢度我揀咗一個國際品牌，俄羅斯品牌。同一個設計，放置不同顏色嘅寶石，大家去睇見個效果相當豐富。咁其中我諗顏色嘅一零一咧，我哋同係設計師都要服噶啦。即顏色嘅 Q， 佢個明度同埋佢嘅豔麗度，因為我知道我時間用得好多，我要快啲。咁我呢度俾大家睇就係我哋入門嘅 Color View 啦，我哋叫顏色嘅嗰個色輪。其中我最重要就係顏色裏面帶俾我哋嘅温暖感覺，或者係一個叫冷色，係俾我哋一種高貴或者冷傲嘅感覺，仲有灰度嘅感覺，啊深濃度。好啦，其實嚟計，逢係設計師都要掌握呢個 color view。color view 上嘅配置，我哋叫顏色配置方法，有簡單嘅幾個板斧。咁我呢度我唔詳細講啦，譬如單一個色嘅，但佢深淺色嘅轉變。以至到互補色，或者我哋叫鄰近色，呢、这個我哋常用。後邊嗰啲咧，其實就高手嚟玩啦。就顏色嘅大膽配置咧，就美啊，應該話意大利嗰邊一啲設計嘅朋友咧，善於運用呢啲顏色組合。總嘅嚟計，顏色嘅組合
，就能夠賦予整個設計一種更加突出、帶出唔同嘅視覺同埋情緒嘅觀感。我喺呢個第一個部分咧，就 end 嚟一句名句：我哋要掌握顏色、彩寶。第一樣，我哋要明白嗰個玩法；第二樣，更加難做，你要忘記咗個玩法，跟住用你個心嚟做，咁你先去做出應對情緒嗰件事。咁我哋從何去掌握？我哋個功法有咗以上嘅配置方法，咁我哋其實點樣能夠明白我哋或者客人嗰個情感被啲咩嘢顏色嘅製啊影響咧？其實我用一個講法就係同理心，即係話你感動時，客先會感動。咁問題就係我哋一定會受到一啲潮流資訊嘅影響，呢、這個大家要明白啦。第二樣，國際品牌或者一啲好出色嘅品牌，嗰啲 s i m p l e design， 即係好似 Anna 嗰種。另外，仲有啲名人咧 ，Phil L 嘅説話，或者佢個誒帶出嘅信息。咁我哋更加知道，若果我哋要明白客人點樣去俾情嗰啲彩寶、彩色寶石嘅嘅影響咧，有一樣嘢我要同大家講就話，而家嚟講，我哋嘅客人嘅體驗好緊要 ，experience。而我哋 experience 裏邊咧，我哋發覺。我哋買嘢嘅客人，其實佢唔係一個純粹買嘅，佢可能買嚟送俾人，而企喺佢身邊嗰個就係接收嘅啦。跟住有一個佩戴上身，我哋要明白而家嘅情景咧，已經係在轉化咗。由我哋實體店以至到數字化啦，我哋叫做有一個字好重要啦，即係話 physical and digital 嘅 retail， 呢個係其中一樣嘢，我哋要明嘅，令到大家知道日客人入到嚟，我哋對住實物同埋影像。顏色上嘅影響，第二樣就教過都講啦，就話客服或者客制化 p e r s o n a l i z a t i o n 個個都想有獨特性，咁顏色係一個方法，令到嗰件賣俾佢嘅嘢有種獨特嘅效果。第三樣亦都係我哋而家不能忘記，就係、是、我哋人機合一，即係話我哋嘅手工藝同埋我哋嘅電子化嘅工藝用嘅儀器全部合一而做嗰、那個作品，先至有更加多特色。去到啊結論篇咧，其實我就有少少，我覺得係值得同大家傾下偈嘅。剛才我講咁短嘅時間，講嗰個功法配色，亦都講心法。我哋要明白，原來彩寶落咗手飾之上，個情感原來咁豐富。點樣從何去掌握呢個能力咧？咁我想同大家傾就話，呢、这個一個關鍵性嘅知識同能力，培育自己嘅能力係自己先做得到嘅啫。第一樣，將你隻眼。睇到靚嘅嘢，知道乜嘢叫靚。咁今日個話題之中咧，其實就講咗幾樣嘢。啊、呃，我就講設計上面嘅配置、顏色嘅配合、平衡嘅結合。其中我有幾樣知識嘅組合，想大家知或者明白，我就 list 咗一啲我重要嘅誒、呃、知識領域同埋一啲書本，其中一個 art and design 嘅 knowledge。第二個咧，我哋就講社會學。文化研究、經濟同管理學嘅知識，第三項就係我哋本位嘅知識，硬技術 （jury craft） 嘅知識。咁呢度如果大家好有興趣呢類嘢咧，以後我哋有機會就傾嘅。咁另外一樣嘢，今日嘅話題我延伸落去後邊啦。廖博士同阿 Justin 朋友裏邊咧就話，寶石上面嘅顏色其實亦都有好重要嘅科學性。咁呢個我諗交俾後邊嘅兩位 speaker 啦。時間上咧，我諗下，我都盡量控制響誒設即係原定嘅計劃。咁我喺呢度先同大家誒、呃、做第一節嘅分享，同埋多謝大家。時間我交俾我哋嘅司儀啦，唔該。已經好，我開心咁樣咧，知道咗咧啲誒顏色啦，對於消費者啦，或者係唔同嘅情感嘅連結咁啊。咁而家咧，我哋好開心請到香港寶石協會 G A H A。主席廖尚仪博士咧，我哋深入了解一下宝石嘅颜色科学。有请廖博士。好，咁我诶 share 咗我嗰个 screen 出嚟先啦。好，咁咧就等等先啦。我哋 share 咗 ，OK， 喺呢度可唔可以缩翻细佢少少？我可以，系得翻，等先啦。诶，揿到嗰个 play。如果观众们咧有诶问题啊，可以随时欢迎喺聊天室嗰度打。咁我哋转头咧，最尾就会有 Q&A 嘅环节嘅
，係或者單獨嗰個 chair screen， 即係頂住咗嗰、那個嗰、那個啱啱嗰個位置頂住咗撳個掣嗰個掣，我睇睇先啦。好 ，control F， 嗰個，等一下先。啱啱定住咗嗰個 play 嗰個掣，我睇睇先，喺喺呢度，希望可以撳得到。佢就啱啱定住咗，咁所以咁得意嘅，熟悉少少先。都望得清楚啦。好得啦，睇唔睇到？好，得睇唔睇到？好啦，大家睇唔睇到？睇到睇到。OK， 好啦，誒、呃。呃、大家好啊！咁我系廖尚仪博士啦。今日我哋有嘅讲题咧，主要系 Color Science of James Dong。咁诶，宝、呃、石嘅颜色科学。咁呢个系我个简介啦。咁啊、呃，博士啦，呃、或者系地质学博士啦，同埋研究地质学家啦，或者宝石学家啦。咁我哋系我系香港宝石学协会嘅主席，广州东新华学院嘅副教授啦。我亦都系诶 ，Edward Goodwin 嘅宝石诶，贵、呃、重宝石嘅研究同埋鉴定协会嘅科学委员会委员。咁誒，首先我哋了解下乜嘢叫做色彩視覺先。咁其實所謂色彩視覺咧，就係、是、一個眼睛點樣去分辨出啦唔同波長嘅光激發顏色嘅能力。咁我哋能夠睇到有光嘅顏色，我哋點解可以睇到顏色咧？主要有三個因素嘅，就係、是、個光源啦，尤其是係可見光啦。咁你個物件係咩物件啊？咁啊，寶石啦。同埋我哋嘅人嘅眼點樣去感知佢哋？點樣去通過我哋眼感知？同埋我哋嘅大腦點樣解釋呢個顏色？咁任何呢三個因素缺乏咗任何一個，我哋都係見唔到有顏色嘅。例如冇光啦，冇物件啦，梗係冇顏色啦。但係人嘅眼咧同其他動物唔同嘅，我哋都要大家個感知個顏色都會唔同。咁而人嘅眼咧有所謂嘅視椎細胞同埋視誒幹細胞嘅。咁視椎細胞咧主要睇呢個顏色嘅感應顏色。咁啊，例如好似紅啦、綠啦，同埋藍色。咁而視幹細胞咧，主要感覺、感知咧，個個感覺咧，嗰個顏色嘅嗰個裏面嘅明暗度嘅。咁誒，日常裏面我哋時候咧，有好多嘅色彩空間嘅，包括咗我哋常用嘅，我哋叫顏料嘅混色啦。咁啊，係係 R G 誒，我哋叫紅、黃、藍三色啦。我哋顏料混顏色啦，或者我哋嘅四色嘅印刷嘅顏色，咁啊 C M Y K 啦，又或者係，但係我哋平時我哋光學嘅顏色咧。係要有 R G B 嘅，特別係唔係 R G B， 即係我哋紅綠藍三色，特別係我哋嘅誒誒相片啦，或者我哋熒幕嘅色彩咧，都係用呢三種顏色嘅。咁而寶石方面嘅時候嘅顏色咧，好多時我哋用數學嘅誒方式嚟去我哋解釋嗰個我哋定義嘅色彩空間咧，我哋好多時用 C I E 啊，或者係用呢個 Munsell 嘅 color color system 嘅色彩色彩空間嚟嚟解釋嘅。咁而嗰個誒顏色咧，我哋係由三樣嘢主要組三樣嘢組成嘅，就係個色相啦、飽和度啦同埋色調。咁色相咧就係你個色環外面嗰個主色同埋佢嗰個隔離嗰個兩個顏色嗰個我哋叫附加色啦，例如黃色裏面嘅嘅偏綠咧或者係偏橙啦。咁啊飽和度裏面嘅時候，嗰個顏色嘅強度啦，即係個濃度啦，又或者係個色調裏面嘅通裏面嗰個明暗度。咁誒，一般寶石產生紫色嘅原因呢，由我哋主要有兩類嘅，一類我哋嘅叫體色。咁啊，體色裏面嘅時候嘅產生嘅機理其實好多嘅，但係主要都係由於呢誒裏面所含嘅元素嘅外圍電子引致嘅選擇性吸收。咁而物質例如紅寶啦，或者藍寶啦，或者甚至尖翼石啦，都係嘅。咁而物另外一類呢，就係、是、一啲物理光學上面嘅，我哋叫叫做物理光學上面嘅假色，例如我哋喺鑽石裏面見到嘅火彩啊，或者喺我哋嘅喺奧寶裏面見到嘅，我哋叫叫做誒誒、呃呃、變彩效應。好啦，咁咩叫選擇性吸收呢？呃、主要係講其實有色嘅、呃、透明寶石裏面吸收咗呢個白光裏面部分波長嘅可見光，例如好似呢個例子右上面嘅呢個例子裏面嘅時候，呢、這、間、個、寶石吸收咗紅橙黃青藍紫呢個白光裏面日光裏面嘅時候嘅藍色同紫色，殘餘嘅顏色紅橙黃綠咧，就會經過咗呢粒寶石嘅反射同埋折射咧，就係進入咗我哋眼睛嘅時候咧，就會見到黃色。咁所以咧，我哋見到黃色嘅色調咧，係一個選擇性吸收嚟嘅。但係選擇性吸收咧，係咪只係得一種嘅吸收嘅嘅模式咧？又唔係喎，喺下面嗰度裏面嘅時候，可能我哋見到啊，頭先吸咗藍色同埋紫色嘅時候咧，就會產生綠誒黃色。但係喺個色環裏面嘅時候咧，我哋 R G B 色環裏面嘅時候咧，黃色嘅吸收咧，其實係可以喺對面嘅對比色吸收藍色而產生
，或者附近兩邊嘅我哋 speech complementary 嘅對比色咧，或者係呢個 cyan 啊，同埋呢個 magenta 嘅顏色吸收，都可以產生黃色。又或者色環裏面吸收曬所有其他顏色，剩翻黃色都可以變成黃色嘅。所以我哋見到同樣嘅顏色可以係產生嘅，由於唔同嘅吸收引致嘅。好啦，咁而而宝石里边咧，其中一个其实有好多嘅紫色嘅原因嘅。咁第一个最主要嘅紫色原因咧，系由于宝石里面含有一啲我哋叫叫做诶、呃、紫色元素，有八个嘅。咁啊叫太凡、洛猛、铁、钴、钴、镍、铜啦。咁例如好似洛嘅元素喺光玉里面就产生红宝石嘅红色，喺绿柱石里面咧就产生呢、這个诶、呃、绿宝石嘅绿色。亦都咧猛嘅元素咧。喺呢個鐵誒、呃、石流石裏面咧，引致到呢個我哋叫叫猛力流石嘅猛嘅嘅嘅橙色，亦都可以喺呢個我哋叫叫做鐵力流石裏面嘅時候咧，鐵咧就可以產產生紅色，或者係橄欖石裏面產生綠色。咁你會問點解一個元素喺裏面唔同寶石裏面嘅時候會產生咗唔同顏色啊？因為個你個元素有唔同嘅價態咧，甚至乎有唔同嘅我哋叫結構，因為寶石有唔同嘅結構。引致到唔同嘅颜色。好啦，咁宝石里面嘅时候，颜色嘅重要性咧，主要系影响咗三样嘢嘅。一样嘢就系佢嘅美观啦，因为个颜色嘅美观度咧，就会影响佢哋好大嘅。因为我哋宝石里面就最能够显示第一个最容易嘅物理嘅，我哋叫现象啦，就系佢嘅颜色。咁亦都佢嘅颜色嘅表现嘅物理性质咧，可以我哋我哋做宝石嘅鉴证啊。呢样呢样嘢，我哋喺后面嘅时候嘅仪式性里面咧，会讲述嘅。咁另外咧，最重要其实咧就系影响佢嘅诶估值啦，估价啦。顏色咧喺誒對於顏有色寶石嚟講咧，係佔咗佢個估值嘅百分之五十以上嘅。咁所以我哋話 color is king。例如誒、呃、一個鮮豔嘅誒嘅誒甲血紅紅色，與同埋同等嘅重量嘅紅色嘅紅寶石咧，佢可能係佢個價估值咧係值係高於同等嘅嘅紅寶石嘅顏嘅價值咧兩至三倍嘅。咁美觀度方面嘅時候咧，其實係每個人咧都有唔同嘅，我哋我哋唔會反對呢個美觀嘅呢樣嘢嘅寶石嘅顏美觀度。咁但係咧喺唔同嘅人唔同嘅人咧，對於顏色嗰個我哋叫嘅偏好咧有唔同，唔同國家都亦都有唔同嘅偏好。咁 GIT 咧就曾經喺呢個二零零一年咧就做一個我哋叫做科學嘅研究。咁佢用咗四個唔同嘅 locality 嘅產地嘅嘅嘅紅寶咧。就做咗一個實驗，就睇下唔同地方裏面嘅時候嘅人咧，對於個顏色，又都紅寶石嘅紅色，有邊個中意邊一種多啲嘅？咁我哋大家你自己可以選下，究竟你中意邊一種顏色多啲咧？咁最之後個研究結果咧，發現咗咧，誒誒訪問咗大約係五百個人，即係四百八十三個人，四百八十二個人嘅嘅參與者咧，咁佢哋發現咧，大部分嘅歐洲人同埋泰國人咧。都會中意泰國紅寶比較深色嘅顏色嘅，但係美國人咧就比較中意抹谷嘅紅寶比較鮮豔少少嘅顏色，而日本人咧就更加中意啲更加鮮豔嘅顏色嘅鮮豔或者係明亮嘅顏色。相對嚟講，就大家原來唔同咧，唔同嘅文化咧有少少差異嘅。咁而個顏色嘅分級方面咧？我哋要睇一個標準嘅顏色，首先我哋有一個標準嘅光源啦，同埋個燈箱啦。咁一般嚟講，我哋會用一個五千 K 或者我哋嘅 CIE 五十嚟決嚟嚟睇嘅。咁即係係咩顏色度咧？就大約係五誒五千 K 咧，就大約係等於咗呢個誒中午嘅日光嘅顏色。咁而我哋觀察一粒寶石嘅時候咧，我哋觀察對色嘅時候咧，我哋有要由台面去觀察。仲要喺由誒睇你唔同角度裏面，十五十至到十五度嘅角度裏面，唔同嘅傾斜角度嚟觀察。咁點解咧？因為人有左右眼嘅，大家兩隻眼之間嗰個距離咧，大約係十二至十三度左右。咁所以咧，我哋就有唔同嘅觀察。當然啦，我哋對色嘅時候，梗係要有個比色石啦，或者係有甚至乎色板嚟對啦。咁然後咧，喺嗰、那個誒。呃 color grading 嘅分級嘅裏面嘅時候咧，色相方面咧，我哋睇下個顏色係例如紅寶石嘅紅色裏面嘅時候係偏橙啦，定係淺紫啊或者深紫色。咁例如有好多歐洲嘅嘅鑑證所裏面嘅時候咧，甲血紅嘅定義咧就係佢話佢紅色裏面係唔應該係變成一橙紅色啊，或者係呢個紫紅色嘅，只係最多可以含有少量嘅紫色喺裏面嘅嘅啫，先可以叫做甲血紅色。咁而飽和度方面咧，就分為呢個七。七個程程度啊，咁就由淺啦，到到中度啦，到深嘅顏色
，咁佢嗰個明亮度嘅時候咧，而喺佢兩每個之間咧，又有唔同嘅明亮度嘅嘅嘅嘅過渡嘅。咁而色調方面咧。亦都係有個即係個濃度咧，顏色個紅色嘅濃度，例如紅寶石嘅時候濃度咧，亦可以由紅色、深紅色，我哋鮮豔嘅紅色咧，慢慢淡，直至到去由紅寶石嘅紅色，而走向咗粉紅色嘅光玉，同埋呢個紫紅色嘅色調。嗱，我哋試下用頭先我哋講色相飽和度同埋色調嚟咧嚟嚟描述呢粒寶石嘅顏色，大家去試下可以試下嘅。呢粒红宝石嘅红色，我哋觉得个佢哋嘅色相系乜嘢啊？橙红色系咪？橙红色，咁佢嘅饱和度你会觉得咩啊？饱和度你会觉得系咪接近呢边啊？系咪大约中间左右啊？系咪中度啊？咁所以色调方面嘅时候咧，就会因为喺呢边嘅时候讲我哋嘅色调个浓度嘅时候比较浓啊嘛，咁所以佢系我哋鲜艳嘅浓度嘅。好啦，同样地咧。我哋除咗我哋头先讲三样嘅因素之外咧，颜色嘅均匀度咧，亦都影响到佢嗰个估值嘅。咁诶，一般嚟讲咧，大部分嘅宝石其实都有色带啊出现嘅。咁但系经过宝石嘅切割之后咧，我哋会发觉咧会减低咗佢嗰个诶减切割之后咧，应该可以将所有嘅宝石嘅诶唔均匀嘅颜色咧，系能够反映到反映啊，或者经过折射咧喺个台面上边咧，系尽量令到个颜色变成均匀嘅。如果你喺台面台面上面仲要見到一個唔均勻嘅顏色咧，係絕對會影響個顏色嗰、那個寶石嘅我哋叫價格嘅。但有啲特別嘅情況嘅，係要特登顯示一粒寶石嘅顏色嘅不誒，我哋叫色帶嘅，例如誒紫黃晶啊，或者我哋好似呢個咁啦，又或者我哋誒有個叫做誒叫做誒西瓜碧西，咁佢呢啲顏色嘅時候咧，都係特登我哋顯示佢唔均勻嘅顏色嘅。咁亦都喺有啲情況之下咧。荧光宝石嘅荧光咧，影影响咗宝石嘅颜色嘅。例如喺日光之下，我哋睇一粒诶，有好强荧光紫外嘅荧光嘅，我哋叫叫做红宝石，系由于呢个缅甸由缅甸同埋越南出产嘅。咁因为佢里面含有比较高嘅镬嘅元素，而铁嘅含量较低咧。咁日光之下咧，因为佢里面含有日光里面含有紫外线咧，咁佢睇上嚟咧就鲜艳好多嘅。而由泰國同埋部分嘅誒，我哋嘅非洲出產嘅紅寶石咧，因為佢裡面含鐵量比較高啊，個熒光性比較弱，咁所以睇起上嚟就比相對嚟講咧就比較沉啊啲啦。好啦，咁誒對於黑面寶石嘅色彩嘅表現方面嘅時候咧，我哋都可以分為兩類嘅，各項同性咧同埋各項異性寶石。咁各項同性寶石嘅時候咧，應該喺唔同嘅方向裡面嘅時候咧，睇佢嘅時候觀察呢粒寶石咧，都會同樣顏色嘅。例如佢紅色嘅話，喺唔同個 A 族啦、B 族、C 族方向嘅時候咧，我哋見到都係紅色，冇乜點轉變嘅。咁但係各向二性寶石嘅時候咧，又分為二族晶同埋三族晶，唔係三二一族晶同二族晶，或者我哋叫二色性二寶石或者三色性寶石喎。點解二色啊？就係變成一個長方形，就 A 族、B 族相同，但係 C 族咧就唔同咗長度喎。咁變咗一個好似長方形嘅形狀嘅時候，咁光線通過咗呢啲寶石嘅時候咧，就會產生咗兩個互相垂直嘅振動嘅吸收，佢唔同嘅折射有唔同嘅吸收。咁喺 C 族方向嘅時候咧，呢兩個振動方向咧。系完全一樣嘅時候，一個正方形啊嘛，咁一個長方形啊嘛，咁所以上面呢個沿住絲軸呢個方向咧，顏色兩個都係紅色嘅話，產生嘅顏色咧就係紅色。但係如果係其中 B 族同 C 族望入去嘅時候咧，你會發覺呢兩個振動方向因為唔同嘅吸收，所以產生唔同嘅顏色嘅振動嘅時候咧，就呢兩個顏色，例如紅色同埋橙黃色嘅振動，就會產生咗橙色嘅顏色出現，就會有唔同嘅顏色啦。咁所以 B 族亦都係一樣，紅色同埋橙黃色嘅振動。嘅疊加，所以肉眼我哋由咁样方向望入去嘅时候咧，我哋就见到橙色啦。咁如果三色性嘅宝石又点咧？三色性宝性嘅宝石咧，因为佢嘅 A、B、C 族都唔同长度，所以就产生咗三个唔同振动嘅唔同颜色，例如蓝色呢、這个同呢个一样啦，呢、這个红诶紫红色就呢两个一样啦，或者系诶黄色呢、這个同呢个一样，三个唔同就形成咗三色性，所以喺三个唔同嘅方向咧，就会有唔同嘅。兩個方向嘅振動嘅顏色嘅疊加，好啦，咁我不如我哋試下睇下一啲誒、呃、實例啊。咁呢粒石咧係各向同性嘅，我呢個沙芙麗啦，我哋叫佢叫含鈉嘅概率誒概率流石，誒鈉凡概率流石啦。咁呢粒石嘅時候，你睇見個顏色咧係比較均勻嘅，外面同裏面均勻嘅。除咗嗱光暗唔算啦，因為寶石嘅切割咧影響佢嘅反射同埋折射啊，咁或者流光啦。咁所以顏色咧係冇乜點分別嘅，但係呢粒尖晶石裏面咧，各項同色寶石咧，你會發覺左邊同右邊咧個顏色咧係會有相對嚟講暗嘅。咁點解會出現啲咁嘅現象咧？係因為有我我哋嘅叫比二嘅嘅比嘅定律啦
就係因為佢左邊入去嘅時候，因為個光路由左邊。入咗個寶石之後，又停過下面嘅時候反射，去到右邊再反射出嚟嘅時候，光路需要嘅長度咧就多大咗，所以出嚟嘅顏色咧就相對嚟講，因為吸收大咗，所以出嚟嘅顏色咧就會變咗較為深啦。咁各向異性寶石係點樣樣咧？頭先我哋講過，其實個例子咧就係紅講緊紅寶嘅。咁各向異性寶石嘅時候，沿住絲族方面，我哋頭先講就會紅色。傳統嚟講咧，我哋話沿住絲族方向，我哋寶石。沿住絲族方向，特別係我哋嘅台面垂直絲族嘅時候咧，我哋會見到紅色嘅顏色。如果寶石個台面垂直絲族嘅 B 方向嘅時候咧，我應該見到橙色嘅。但係實際情況係咪咁咧？就唔係嘅。實際情況咧，其實係當我哋嘅光線，如果我哋嘅寶石係垂直絲族切割，我台面垂直絲族切割嘅時候咧，我哋我哋唔考慮嗰個誒觀部嘅嘅折射啊。我哋淨係考慮個停布裏面嘅時候嘅反射嘅光嘅就光路咧，我哋發覺呢個方向咧就係絲族嘅方向。頭先呢個絲族方向係紅色啊嘛，絲族方向入咗去嘅時候紅色，再反射呢個方向嘅時候就是橙色。咁你會橙色，但係呢個橙色嘅個光路咧係特別多啲嘅。咁所以近幽靈嘅方面咧，你個反射出嚟嘅顏色咧就會偏近橙，而係近我哋嘅叫做角嘅，我哋叫做底尖個位置嗰度嘅時候，中間位置咧個個光路咧。就絲族方向嘅位置咧，就會相對嚟講咧，就會比較紅一啲。然後咧 ，B 族嘅方向咧，就會相對少。咁所以中間咧，就會特別紅一啲嘅。所以出嚟嘅結果咧，就垂直絲族嘅方向咧，個顏色咧就有兩層，而外邊咧就偏橙，內層係偏紅。而平衡絲族嗰個講台邊平衡絲族嘅切割咧，你就會發覺一樣嘢咧，就係、是、會一個我叫做交叉嘅形式嘅顏色嘅嘅嘅嘅分布，而特別係。光係由沿住 C 族嘅位置進誒 B 族位置 ，B 族而家要 B 族嘅位置入嘅時候咧，就會係偏紅啦。然後 C 族位置嘅時候就係偏偏橙啦。然後 C 族嘅位置咧就會偏紅。咁所以出嚟嘅時候咧，外圍咧就會偏紅，而中間位置咧就會有經過光路之後咧就會偏誒橙色。另外嗰兩組嘅時候咧，因為佢都係呢個我哋嘅 A 族同 B 族嘅方向，所以佢兩個咧都係誒兩個嘅我哋我哋叫叫做兩個嘅橙色嘅疊加。咁出嚟嘅顏色咧係平均都係橙色嘅，所以你會發覺咧係平衡絲族嘅方向咧就會出產生一個我哋叫做交叉嘅顏色兩組嘅嘅顏色嘅現象。咁嗱，我哋試下又睇下實例啦。呢粒寶石大家認為呢個切割嗰粒紅紅寶石係應該平衡絲族定係誒垂直絲族切割啦？俾五秒鐘時間你諗下，一、二、三、四、五，係啦，係垂直絲族切割嘅。咁點解咧？因為佢外圍同埋內圍咧，內部中中心咧係唔同顏色嘅，外邊偏橙，中間偏紫，亦都係呢個都係啦。咁所以嗰個結果咧係垂直絲族切割。另外一個咧，紅色碧西嘅切割係點樣？我哋睇下呢個，誒、哎，我哋見到一個交叉型個狀喎，然後外調轉頭，外邊係比較深，裏面係比較淺，然後另外有另外一組嘅顏色嘅，所以佢係平衡個台面咧，平衡絲族切割，得唔得？另外一個。情況就係咩啊？我哋如果對於三色性嘅寶性嘅寶石係嚟講咧，同樣地我都會見到一個交叉型嘅顏色，兩組顏色嘅分布嘅。但係咧，呢、這個情而家嘅情況係咩咧？就係、是、每一組顏色分布咧係有內層同埋外層嘅分別嘅，每一組都有內層嘅分別，唔同意識性嘅寶石咁樣樣嘅。呢粒就係紅柱石，咁你會見到兩層啦。咁或者下一個例子好似呢個坦桑石咁樣啦，亦都係你會見到交叉型嘅顏色分布，內層同內層咧，紫色同藍色咧，或者係。一啲偏綠嘅藍色同埋藍色嘅分佈啦，或者深淺嘅色調啊，或者係色相嘅分別。好啦，咁但係因為我哋大部分嘅地寶石嘅原石咧，其實我哋發現嘅時候，其實佢都唔係有好明顯明顯話完整嘅晶體形狀嘅，都係一啲刺身礦床啊，或者我哋嘅叫沖積礦床。咁佢哋嗰個形狀方位，其實我哋係好多時都唔係好清楚嘅。咁所以我哋用咩嘢雕琢方法，同埋切磨嘅取向方位咧，點樣展現到佢最好嘅顏色咧，就完全靠。嗰、那個寶石嘅切割師嘅工藝啦，咁我哋留翻呢個部分咧，就俾第三位嘅講者阿 Justin 嚟講啦。咁多謝各位，我部分講完啦。唔該曬，唔該曬，唔該曬博士嘅分享，亦都知道其實唔同咧嘅顏色咧係有背後有唔同元素去形成嘅。咁接住嚟咧，我哋有請美國嘅寶石切割師 Justin K. Prim， 同時咧佢都係 Fisting Apprentice 嘅始創人啦，講解下啲寶石嘅切割魔法啦、美感同埋價值嘅。Our next speaker, American gem cutter Mr. Justin K. Prim, is also the founder of Fasting Apprentice. Also, we should share the beauty, value, and the magic of gem cutting. Please welcome Justin. 
Thank you. Thank you, Loop, for inviting me. And thank you for the previous talks. Very, very nice. I, they're all flowing together today. So I want to pick up where the previous one left off and talk to you about beauty, value, and the magic of gem cutting. So my name is Justin K. Prim, and I am the founder and instructor at the Faceting Apprentice Institute. I'm a gem cutter from America, and I'm also the author of a book that recently came out, The Secret Teachings of Gem Cutting. I've been traveling around the world doing training with different gem cutters in America, Thailand, Sri Lanka, Switzerland, and more. And so all of these experience, in addition to my gemology training at GIA and AIGS in Bangkok, have led to a very good understanding for me about how to cut gemstones and how to look at gemstone rough. So what I want to talk to you guys today about beauty, value, and the magic of gem cutting. So I'm going to define what is gem cutting before we look at how does gem cutting work? How does it go from the rough to the polish state? Then we're going to look at the power of gem cutting. So how does the cutting alter the stone? And using some of the properties that we just saw in the last talk, how do we change the color, change the appearance of the stone? And then I want to talk about the sacrifice that it takes to make those choices to make the stone beautiful and what we have to lose in order to do that. And then finally, I'm going to talk about recutting the art of transforming a mundane stone into an extraordinary stone. So let's begin. So before we can talk about how do we do gem cutting or how does gem cutting affect the stone, we have to understand what is gem cutting. So let's give a simple definition. So gem cutting is the art of shaping, cutting, and polishing the gemstone. But there's more than one kind. It's not just cutting is cutting. There's four main types of gemstone cutting. So we've got faceting, cabochons, carvings, and beads. And for what I want to talk about today, we're just going to focus on the faceting, cutting the stone with the flat faces. So let's look a little bit into the process of how do we take a stone from the rough state to the polished state. So there's three general stages that we can talk about. This, the rough stage is the stage of the stone as it comes out of the ground. The mining process gives us a rough stone. And then the gem cutter takes it and through a series of decisions, he will decide how the stone's going to be cut. So first we're gonna make the preform and make the general shape of the stone, getting out any inclusions and figuring out how we're gonna orient the color, just like we saw in the last few slides, um, looking at the C-axis, looking at all these different gemological features to make our preform. And then finally, we add our facets, the cutting, the polishing, making the stone sparkle and shine. So there are many shapes that we can cut a gemstone into, and these shapes will usually be determined by the shape of the rough and the shape that we can make the preform. So I think here, if you've ever seen gemstones, you probably will recognize many of these. You know, we've got emerald cuts, we've got brilliant cuts, mixed cuts, step cuts, all kinds of cuts, but the outline shape is unique. Every stone is probably uh, suitable for one shape or another, depending on the shape of the rough. And then once we make our shape, then we decide about the cutting style. So these are the three major cutting styles. We've got brilliant cuts, step cuts, and then when you mix the two together, you get the mixed cut. And the cutter will then decide, once he has the shape based on the rough, then he has to look at the tone, the saturation, the hue, figure out what kind of cut is going to enhance the stone, what cut's going to make it more beautiful, more colorful, more shining. And once they've chosen that, then it's time to actually take that rough stone and turn it into a, a finished gem. And so let's see how we can do that. So the first step is the preforming step, as I said. So we take the rough stone just in our hand and we're just going to be sh doing a general outline shape. So whether the stone is round, oval, pear shape, square shape, this is the time when we make that shape. And you can see that it's just done in the finger. So we wanna be able to move around to remove inclusions and to make the general shape. 
And then once we have our shape made, then we're going to actually put it into the machine, attach it so that we can have angles, indexes. We have com complete control over how we're going to rotate the stone and add angles. And you can see here, it's a, it's a slow, but it's a very precise process. We have to look a lot, cut a lot in order to make all the facets perfect. And then once we finish this cutting step, we're going on to the final step, which is polishing. And so the polishing step takes those rough facets that we've cut in, they're, they're frosty. We can see here, they're, they're not shiny yet. And then through the process of polishing, we're going to make the stones shiny, glassy, reflective, so that they, the light can go in, reflect, and then come back to the viewer and, and look like color, reflection, shine, brilliance. So finally, then we have our finished gem. And so we can see it's shiny, it's reflective, and we're getting lots of color back, which is one of the biggest things that we want. It's exactly what we saw in the last presentation. Color makes the biggest value change. So the color is very important and we have to use every trick that we have in order to bring that color out. So that's where the magic comes in, the magic of cutting and then the magic of recutting. So we're using the knowledge of gemology as well as the knowledge and expertise of our cutting to alter the gemstone. So here we can see those three steps that I just described, the rough, the preform, and then the final cut. And notice how the color changes between the original rough stone to the final polished stone. The, the polished stone with its proper reflection and the proper, proper facet angles, it's bringing the light back to you. The color actually looks stronger and more saturated and intense in the polished stone here. We can see the same thing for these spinels. The hidden beauty inside of the stone isn't released until we have the actual faceting pattern with the polishing. We can see that the rough spinel, the color, it's very beautiful, it's very pink, but it doesn't shine. It doesn't have any reflection or brilliance. Once we've faceted the stone, we've made it into a very beautiful shape, but also the pattern inside, it's coming back to you in the form of color, sparkle, reflection, it's alive, it's moving. So the gem cutter, through his ability to cut the stone and understand different types of cutting, can actually change the color a little bit. Here you can see these two stones, same piece of rough. On the left side, we see the brilliant cut. It's more sparkly, more white light, but that means we have less of the blue. On the right side with the mix cut, so we're using a step cut on the bottom, a brilliant cut on top, and you can see in the same type of material, same color material, but the finished stone doesn't look the same. And it's because of what's happening on the bottom of the stone. Here we can see very straight lines. We're using brilliant facets, so it's all triangles. Over here, we're using small rectangles, so the, the faceting pattern is different. You can see that the shape of the outline is different, it's round. Here we have a line, so instead of a point, we're getting more weight here. But then also you can see we're also getting more color and it's exactly what we saw in the last presentation the light path is longer the light moves through the stone longer and so it's able to absorb more color and bring the color back to you in the form yeah, of, of hue and saturation so here we can see a nice example of the outline of the rough directly translates into the shape of the stone so this point right here is this point right here and you can see that I followed the shape. I made it more regular. I made it more beautiful and, and, and symmetrical, but the shape is the same. It's, I, I try to follow it perfectly and I use a brilliant cut. So you can see lots of sparkles, but also lots of color. So another thing that the gem cutter has the power to do is make the stone look sharper, more full of color. And one of the things that we often do, and I'll especially talk about this in the recutting section, closing the window. So every material needs special angles. So here we can see there's a hole in the middle. The color out here, it's beautiful. It's very strong. It's very vibrant saturation. But because the angles are incorrect in the middle of the stone, we can see through it. The light goes in but it doesn't come back, it just goes through. Here we have the same type of stone, same size, same material, but notice the middle. It's full of color, 
the saturation, the tone is deeper, darker. We have more vibrance because we can't see through. Notice here, we can see the letters right through the stone. Here, we only have, it's a mirror. It's just showing you back the color. So aside from just the technical aspect of cutting, gemstone is also the creative art. For the gem cutter who wants to express an idea or to work with the beauty of nature, gem cutting can be like a painting. It can be like a sculpture. It is the artist's work, but it's the gemstone artist. So we've seen some of the things that the gemstone cutter can do. Let's talk about the price of doing that. And I don't mean the price in value, but the price in the size, the price in the color, the price in the weight. So let's talk about what makes a well-faceted stone. So for the stone to be a good stone, there's some things it needs to have. One of them, symmetry. We need a balanced shape. We don't want the shape to be a bad shape. We don't want it to look like a potato or anything. We want it to be symmetrical, perfect. Also the polishing, we want it to be perfect. No scratches, no lines, nothing that will block the light. Because of course the quality of the polishing is what allows the light to go inside of the stone and then also to come back in the reflection. So the better the polish, the better the color, and also the more sparkle. And then finally, the proportions. So in this case, we have the oval shape. Now, some shapes can be very long, emerald cut, pear shape, but some shapes, they, they need a special size. And the oval, I would say, needs a special size. If you make the oval too long, suddenly it's not beautiful anymore. It's too long, it looks strange. So I wanna show you now some of the differences between the bad cutting and the good cutting, the bad shapes and the good shapes, and you can see what is the difference. So here we have two pieces of tourmaline, pink tourmaline, different stones. They're not the same stone, but we can see on the left side, we have a very strong color, strong saturation, very nice color, but the, the, the cutting is not good. We can see the outline shape is not even, it's not symmetrical. We have the big window, so notice there's no color reflection here. We're just looking through the stone. The polishing's not good. It looks filmy. There's some lines, and the faceting pattern is, is not well done. It's not, it's not symmetrical anymore. Notice here. Now, on this tourmaline, we don't have the strong color. It has a nice color, but it's more, it's less saturated than here. This one is more saturated, but I would say that this is the more beautiful stone because we have the beautiful outline shape, it's very symmetrical, it's very perfect. You can see all the facets balanced. They're mirrored. So we have one here, perfectly symmetrical here. One here, one here, one here. Everything around the whole stone is symmetrical. You can see all the points. They're giving you a focal point right into the middle of the stone. So your eye naturally goes right to the middle and then you see the reflection of the color. So even though the color is not as strong here, compared to this one, I would say everyone would agree this is the more beautiful stone because it has so many things working for it. In the next example, we have the same thing. Similar stones, not the same stone, but same material, garnet, orange color. Notice here, we've got a bad cut. The corners are different sizes. The, the facets are crooked. We can see one line here is a different line than here. It's different than here. So all of the lines are crooked. We have the big window, so the angles are not correct. We're seeing through the stone. And because the stone doesn't have good polish and it doesn't have a good pattern, it looks dull, it looks dead. We don't see the life of the stone coming out. Whereas for this stone, similar color, but we've given it a different type of cut. This one has, it's full of life, full of sparkle. And we can see the outline shape is perfectly cut. Every corner, same size. All the facets are perfectly balanced, where here we can see some are big, some are smaller, some don't meet up. They, it just doesn't have the artistic quality that we're looking for in the perfect stone. Whereas this one we can see, even in the bottom of the stone, every facet is balanced. The top of the stone, every facet is balanced. So we're making this natural element perfect. Here we can see another one. This one is the recut. So this is the original stone. This is a gray spinel from Burma. So this is how the Burmese cut the stone. We bought the stone. So notice what we see. It looks dark. 
all different shapes of facets. The lines are all different. The facets are all different sizes. We don't have nice meet points. So we don't have this expression of the artistic quality of the cutting. But aside from that, let's just look at the color. So we have lots of black in the stone. If we try to see the true blue color, we see it here, a little bit here, a little bit here. But most of the stone is black or we have the window. It looks gray. Same stone. We recut the stone and now we see blue, blue, still some black. It's a dark material, so there's no way to get all of the black away. But with the recutting, we've made a perfect outline shape. Notice this one. The shape is not very nice. We have very round. Then here we have bumpy, bumpy. There's a point here, so it's not a it's not a good shape. But look what's happened. 2.89 carats, 1.74. So we lost a lot of weight. We lost half the stone, but look at the price. We bought the stone for 150 US dollars, sold the stone after we lost the weight for 550 because of the color. Here, the color is gray, the color is black. Here, the color is blue. It's a dark blue, but it's a blue that people like, a gray blue. So this brings me into my next topic, which is the recutting, the art of the recutting. So this is my favorite part of gem cutting, taking the bad stone, turning it into the good stone. So this is what we might do. We might take a stone like this. This is how we saw before. The outline shape, not very nice. It a, has a bump here. It's not, the, it's not symmetrical. Big window. So notice we're getting the red color, pink color, but then here, no color. It's just looking through the stone. We can see the meet points are very inconsistent. Sometimes a line, sometimes a point, sometimes the point's been cut too big and it's flat. So now watch the same stone, same stone. So I've recut, I've changed the pattern, changed the angles, made the shape better. And look how different the color is. Now we have one nice pink color, super saturated. Whereas before we had dark, almost brown, red, light pink, very light pink, orangey pink. You know, we're not seeing the true color, but now we see the true color of the stone. It was a very saturated pink. So this is what we're trying to do with the recutting. So we have a formula. We know we need the good technologies. We need those machines to help us make the perfect stone. But we also need all of the gemology that we learned from Dr. Liu in the last in the last uh, presentation. We need to understand the rough, the color, how the light moves inside of the stone. Then we need to practice because, of course, gem cutting is difficult. It takes a lot of time to learn how to make the perfect shape. And then you have to be very focused to see the details, look closely. But finally, when we put all of those things together, we get the well cut stone, the beautiful stone. So, transforming the commercial cut into the precision cut means we're going to increase the value. Okay. So let's talk about recutting. We can say that a gemstone has no value if it's not beautiful enough to be sold. Maybe you have a gemstone, but if no one will buy it, it has no value. No one, it, it's worth nothing. People are willing to spend more money on a stone if it's beautiful, if it catches their eye, if, it, if they fall in love with the stone, they'll spend more money. And finally, a smaller stone with a better cut is almost always worth more than a bigger stone that is ugly. Ruby is an exception to this, though. We, we have to say Ruby is in its own category. Are we OK on time? Everything's good? OK. I'll, I'll, I'll just do a few more slides and we'll, we'll, we'll get to some questions. So I'll just show you a few of the recuts. So here we can see same stone, dark, dark red. It's not showing the true beauty, but once I do the recut, same stone, bright red, very beautiful. Here we can see similar to before, dark purple tanzanite. We don't have all the color coming back, a lot of dark areas and then the window. Once we recut, beautiful full of color same with the emerald we're not seeing the color coming back here we need to get the good reflection and you can see once i have recut it we're getting a lot more brightness a lot more brilliance 
Now, let me show you one that was very difficult. It was a very difficult stone to work with. It was a big challenge. Stone is cracked. It has a big broken area over here. Notice it's white. It's turned white. There's a big hole in the table. The jeweler has damaged the stone. So I had to cut the stone almost in half, change the shape into the oval. And now you can see we lost almost half the stone, but we're coming out with a nice color. So let me give you one more example with some numbers. I, last year, well, the last few years, this Burmese hot pink spinel has been everyone's favorite stone. Fluorescent, rare, beautiful, very expensive stone. So here we can see the original stone, 4.3 carats. This is the stone after the recut. So we bought the stone, 4.3 carats, $3,500 a carat. So this is a $15,000 stone. We did the recut because the stone wasn't beautiful. The, the, the color was good. The clarity was amazing, but the cutting was bad. So we lost 1.76 carats. So we had 4.3. We lost 1.76. That's about $6,000 of the price. We just cut off the stone. Once the stone is recut, 2.54 carats, but we sold it for $22,000. So even though we lost so much weight, you know, that's almost half the stone lost, but we sold it for $7,000 more than what we bought it for. How is this possible? How can we do this? Improving the color, improving the brightness, making the shape perfect, all the facets perfect. Now, the most high-end customer can buy the stone, put it into the most beautiful jewelry of the world, and they're willing to pay more, even for the smaller stone, because it's the best quality. And when it comes to the fine jewelry, and it comes to the fine cutting, it really does come down to the best quality. The gem cutter must know what they're doing and know how to do it. So that's what I wanted to speak to you guys about today, beauty, value, and the magic of gem cutting. So thank you. Well, I think it's very important to show the best color of a stone. So thank you, Justin, sharing. Thinking Daisy Jewelry Miss Daisy Chen, Daisy. Hey, hello, Dagahoo,我是Daisy.我多謝之前三位專家去分享佢哋自己嘅專業樂學問啦,咁令到我已經兩多嘅。咁我本身呢,我就係做一啲沙拿嚟嘅。係啦。咁,你兩介紹下自
個 design concept 咧，其實係嚟自於有一個好中意嘅英國 artist， 叫做就叫做 Jason Martin 嘅。咁 Jason Martin 咧，我就融入咗佢嘅啊畫作啦，去帶出翻呢一個畫像啦。咁點解叫做 canvas 咧？因為 canvas 喺我之前誒、嗯，譬如我讀翻一隻時候，我主修 painting 嘅時候咧，我畫畫，我經常係會用到長方形啊，或者唔同形狀嘅 canvas 去做一個畫布啦，喺上面去畫唔同嘅形狀啦。咁我就將呢樣嘢咧，就帶入咗我呢個畫誒畫畫上入邊。咁就將兩個唔同嘅畫框咧結合翻一齊。咁一邊咧，誒、呃、左手邊嘅誒嗰個 canvas 咧，呢、这個位置咧，咁就係見到好多好厚重，好似唔同粒突形狀嘅形狀誒嘅感覺出嚟嘅。咁呢個咧其實係模仿翻 Jason Martin 入邊嘅畫作啦。係啦，咁而家介紹緊呢個咧就係、是、英國 artist 叫 Jason Martin 啦。咁你見到佢嘅畫咧都係用啲好厚重嘅 acrylic 啊或者 oil painting 去做翻佢自己創作嘅。係啦，咁佢呢個畫作咧，通常都比較抽象啲啦。咁用翻唔同嘅誒誒厚重嘅 acrylic 啦，或者 oil painting 啦，去表達翻佢自己嘅情感表達咯。咁我喺我自己嘅作品入邊咧，我都會運用到唔同嘅半寶石啦。咁啊，包括有常用嘅孔雀石啊、青金石啊、白水晶啊，或者粉晶嘅。我自己就個人就好中意青金石嘅，因為點解呢？因為其實佢青金石佢係唔係單純一個藍色啊嘛，佢有唔同嘅可能黃色啊或者白色嘅元素喺入面。咁入面嘅黃鐵礦啦或者方解石嘅比例唔同，係都造就咗青金石佢嗰種美態咯。咁孔雀石亦都係嘅，佢都唔係一個單純一個綠色咯，而係有好多唔同嘅變化。每一個半寶石佢都有獨一無二佢自己嘅石紋喺入面嘅。咁亦都講返啦，咁我喺設計方面啦，譬如點樣去配搭返唔同嘅寶石啊，咁我就會用返，譬如好似頭先誒幾位專家都有講到嘅顏色嘅配搭，咁就會用到對比色或者係近似色嘅，係啦，咁唔同嘅顏色嘅配搭呢，亦都造就咗唔同嘅設計嘅感覺出嚟啦。咁嘅 canvas 嘅 collection 咧，呢個係一個手鏈嚟嘅。咁上面亦都應用咗唔同嘅誒半寶石啦。譬如我金色呢個系列呢，其實我係擦咗孔雀石嘅，亦都用咗對比色嘅顏色去做返啦。對金色去配搭返呢個綠色嘅元素出嚟啦。咁上面呢一個呢，係一個高遠 emo 嚟嘅。咁每一個呢，都係我自己人手上色，咁所以就每一個效果都唔同。佢出嚟嘅效果係好似每一幅好特別嘅畫咁樣。佢有一種流動性，好似個水彩畫或者 liquid art。係啦，亦都對於我一個誒品牌嘅里程碑好重要啦，因為奠定咗我品牌嘅風格。咁呢個咧，以下介紹咧就係 Canvas Collection 嘅入邊嘅耳環啦。咁上面一樣啦，我襯咗唔同嘅青金石啦。其實誒寶石嘅配搭咧，我係襯翻唔同嘅誒鐵道嘅金嘅，因為其實我呢個蘇九二五嘅 collection 咧係全部都係上海純嘅作品，都係比較 colourful 啲啦。我會通常會電腦咗幾隻唔同嘅顏色啦，譬如有 Rhodium 啦，有呢個 Rose Gold 啦，係啦，有 Yellow Gold 啦，同埋呢個黑料色嘅。係啦，咁唔同顏色我就配搭翻唔同嘅寶石咯。譬如係白金色啊，我就襯翻呢個青金石嘅。係啦，咁如果玫瑰金我就襯翻呢個粉晶啦。咁金色呢個就襯翻孔雀石。咁啊，黑料色呢個咧我就襯翻白晶嘅。咁成個個感覺就比較比較和諧啲咯。其實點樣配搭唔同嘅寶石，就係我就覺得係好視乎翻 d e s i g 本身對於顏色嘅敏感度啊，同埋佢對於顏色嘅嗰個美感係究竟係點樣去運用翻。咁對於佢自己平時日常嘅誒、呃，譬如佢嗰個對美感嘅誒、呃、創作啊，係點樣嚟呢？譬如好似我咁啦。其實我平時我就好中意咧去睇唔同嘅展覽啊，唔同嘅藝術品啊。咁其實依樣嘢都對於培養嘅顏色嘅敏感或者係美感方面咧，亦都好有幫助嘅。咁至於呢一個咧就係 Canvas 嘅頸面啦，係啦。咁頭先咧你都見到啦，係用咗兩隻唔同嘅嗰個方形框啦，唔同嘅幾何圖形配搭翻，同樣係一樣方形嘅半寶石去配搭翻成個系列出嚟咯。咁呢個呢，右邊呢個呢，高爾咧無咧亦都係啦。頭先咁講啦，係每一個形狀、每一個顏色嘅配搭都係唔同嘅，亦都因為人手去做啦，咁所以每一個出嚟效果亦都係唔同啦。咁加埋有唔同嘅線條啦，譬如你見到有啲直線啊、有啲圓形啊，佢令到成個平衡度就會比較好啲，個美感就會靚啲咯。
。咁今日嘅分享系咁多先，咁多谢晒大家。唔该晒 Daisy 嘅分享啦。咁我哋今日咧都请咗咁多位精彩嘅嘉宾演嘅演讲啦。咁我哋嚟唔到咧 K 诶 Q a 嘅环节啦。咁因為問題都比較多，咁所以我哋揀選咗咧就係幾題係問今日嘅嘉賓嘅。咁首先咧，第一題問題咧就係問薛博士啦。佢就話：如果咧係誒結婚啊，想買啲寶石嘅首飾俾朋友啦，有冇話建議邊一種寶石咧？係咪紅寶石比較受歡迎咧？呢、这個問題剛才我諗我其實非常之同意。其實我哋消費一件珠寶咧，即係買俾人或者係我哋接收咧，都要睇個心。所以喺顏色上嘅取與捨咧，其實唔係在於我哋剛才講嘅市場價值，最重要係究竟你要買嗰個同埋送出去或者帶嗰個，究竟佢佢 prefer 啲乜嘢？另外一個空間就係、是、每個顏色都有一種文化歷史嘅意義，我哋要知道或者個受用者要知道。另外一樣嘢就係設計師，好似剛才誒阿 Daisy 一樣啦，究竟喺冇設計上面有啲附加價值？甚至乎一啲價值係嚟自精工嘅 cutting， 咁整個 package 我諗而家嚟計，我哋要咁樣去，我哋叫做推廣俾或者推銷俾我哋嘅客人。我諗我答案應該叫做開放式。唔該曬，唔該曬，謝博士。咁下一題問題咧係問廖博士嘅喎、哦，咁有觀眾就問啦，日常生活裏邊啦，例如啲香水啊、洗手液嗰啲咧，會唔會影響寶石嘅顏色嘅咧？誒、呃、一般嚟講咧，其實香水咧，如果係香水啊或者洗手液冇顏色嘅話咧，就影響唔係好大嘅。咁但係咧，對於有啲有啲有孔嘅寶石，即係有窿嘅寶石咧，本身佢會吸收咗佢落去面咧，可能會污污染咗粒寶石嘅時候咧，你係冇辦法可能寫翻翻出嚟啊，咁佢就唔係咁好啦。咁另外仲有一個情況咧，就係、是、一啲香水咧，有陣時咧係會、呃即係黐咗喺個第二嘅底部啊，我哋叫佢嘅停部嘅位置嗰度嘅時候咧，就會形成咗喺嗰粒寶石同埋嗰個空氣之間咧，就形成咗一個層膜啊，一個膜啊。咁而呢啲膜咧，可能會喺即係你當你洗嘅時候，可能會黐咗落個底度噶嘛。咁形成咗啲光線進入去嘅時候咧，就出現咗個漏光嘅現象啊。咁你另個漏光嘅時候，你咪睇起上嚟嘅時候，好似頭先阿 Justin 講嗰樣嘢嘅嘅時候，你咪嗰粒石咪可能佢透咗光，可能嗰個位置暗咗啊，即冇任何光線反翻過嚟咯。咁你個睇起上嚟嘅顏色會暗淡咗咯，咁會有啲咁嘅情況。咁基本上，如果你清洗寶石嘅時候咧，儘量都係梗係用水啦，唔好用洗手洗手液啦，咁會好少少咯。都提醒啲女士們咧，可能誒、呃、去宴會啊嘅時候咧，可能著好啲衫先，跟住誒噴咗香水啦，之後先帶珠寶咁樣嘅。咁好少少啦，係啊。好，唔該曬李博士。咁呢題問題咧就問 Justin 嘅 ，so this is one 啊、uh, ，this is。We have a one question for you, Justin. So you have mentioned you have、uh, cut a very challenging、uh, stone in your presentation. So how did you come up with a solution for that? Well, the so the stone was round and part of it was broken. So the first thing that we had to figure out was what's the new shape going to be because you know the customer is very concerned about the weight. So if you take a round stone and you lose part of it. It's not going to be round anymore. So then we have to decide what shape is it going to be, and sometimes even when you're when you have that much damage, sometimes it actually makes sense to turn the stone maybe upside down or in a new way. So we had to really we thought about it for a few days to try to figure out how are we going to orient the stone, where's the new table going to be, because also the table has a had a hole in it. So there was several pieces of damage on that stone. But eventually, yeah, we 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 took off the damage, and then we looked at it for a long time and just said, okay, you know, it sort of looks like an oval. We can lose a little bit more weight, make the oval shape, and eventually, yeah, once we made the shape, then it was easy. But looking at the stone and really trying to figure out how are you going to make a new shape, but also make the customer happy to not lose too much weight, and you know, we had to think about the color as well. Make sure that we're not going to lose the color. Lose too much color in the changing of the shape because when the stone gets smaller, sometimes, especially in sapphire, it can lose color with color zoning. So we had to be very careful and, and use different tools. You know, we had to soak it in oil and, and look inside to try to see inside of the stone.、Um, but mostly, we were just looking, thinking, making a plan, and then finally, we actually took it to the machine and started to make a new shape and. It came out well. The customer was very happy. So yeah, it was it was a 
a challenging but satisfying uh, experience. Oh, thank you. So the new cutting really adds the value to the stone. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, for this stone, the customer already owned it, so they didn't need to sell it, but it was mostly just to be able to wear it because they had it in a ring. So when it's broken, it can't go back in the ring. So for them, it was more about the value of just just owning it and being able to use it. Thank you, Justin. 仲有一題問題問Daisy啦 咁點樣去平衡返佢個色彩呢其實係好似我上面呢一個啦鋪現呢無理嘅咁點樣去配襯返顏色就係通常我哋會用返黑白嘅顏色去配襯返呢一個白金色呢係因為黑白色其實係最